sound check. Mic test. Hi. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to Jed and Helen wedding ceremony. We are requesting the guests to please settle down and occupy the seats except for the first four rows that would be reserved for the members of the entourage. May we request all the members of the entourage to please proceed at the entrance door for our assembly and to start the processional. We also want to request everyone to please turn your phone into silent mode. We also want to inform you that the couple hired a professional photo and video team to capture the moments and for you to just enjoy the whole ceremony. No need to use your cameras and phones to take pictures. This is strictly an unplugged wedding. Guests are not allowed to use their cameras and phones to take pictures. Most importantly, during the processional or parade of the bridal entourage and the bridal march. Please respect and grant the request of our dear couple. Thank you and please be silent and remain seated. The ceremony will start in a while.
Dearest brothers and sisters in Christ, there is a moment in our lives when life becomes more meaningful because it is shared. Today, we have come to celebrate the beginning of a new life together for Jed and Helen. In this joyful feast of love, we will be both witnesses as well as brothers and sisters in Christ, offering them to the care and guidance of our Lord. As one church, we pray that Christ may bestow on them His grace on this memorable day when they start their new life together as husband and wife. Please remain seated for the processional.
all stand. Brothers and sisters, we are gathered in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. My brothers and sisters, God is love, and has in some mysterious ways drawn you together in love. But He leaves you free to make the, that love grow and to let it wither or die. The Lord will help you to forge a future for your love if you do your share when you stand to the commitment to love and honor one another in good times and in bad, in poverty and in plenty, in sickness and in health, for better or, and for worse, in the covenant which you are about to seal. Renew your love and covenant every time you partake of God's covenant with us in the Holy Mass. We are one with you, Jed and Helen, in this momentous celebration or event in your life. And we come here, brothers and sisters, to pray, most especially for the happiness of Jed and Helen. We don't pray only for success, 
We pray, only, also, we pray first and foremost for happiness because we believe that success will follow when we are happy. And that's why we offer this Mass in thanksgiving to the Lord and we offer this Mass for you, Jed and Helen, that you may live happily ever after. And so let us prepare ourselves for the sacred feast. Let us call to mind our sins and once again beg the Lord for mercy and forgiveness. Together we say, I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that these are servants now to be joined by the sacrament of matrimony may grow in the faith they profess and enrich your church with faithful offspring. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated for the liturgy of the word. A reading from the book of Genesis. Then the Lord God said, It is not good for the man to be alone. I will make the suitable partner for him. So the Lord, so the Lord God formed out of the ground various wild animals and various birds of the air. And he brought them to the man to see what he would call them. Gave names to all the cattle, all the birds of the air, and all the wild animals, but none of, but none proved to be the suitable partner for the man. So the Lord God cast a deep sleep on the man, and while he was asleep, he took one of his ribs and closed up its place with flesh. The Lord God then built up into a woman the rib that he had taken from the man. Then he would brought her to the man. The man said, This one at last is bone of my bones and flesh from my flesh. This one shall be called woman. For out of her man, this one has been taken. This is why a man leaves his father and mother and clings to his wife, and the two of them become one body. The word of the Lord. Responsorial song, let our response be, happy are those who fear the Lord. Happy are those who fear the Lord. Happy are you who fear the Lord, who walk in his ways. For you shall eat the fruit of your hard work, handiwork, happy shall you be unfavored. Response. Happy are those who fear the Lord. Your wife shall be like a fruitful vine in the recess of your home, your children like olive plants around your table. Happy are those who fear the Lord. Behold, thus is the man blessed who fears the Lord. The Lord bless you from Zion. May you see the prosperity of Jerusalem all the days of your life. Happy are those who fear the Lord. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Beloved, be subordinate to one another 
out of reverence for Christ. Wives should be subordinate to their husbands as to the Lord. For the husband is the head of his wife, just as Christ is the head of the church. He himself, the savior of the body. As the church is subordinate to Christ, so wives should be subordinate to their husbands in everything. Husbands, loves, love your wives, even as Christ loved the church and handed himself over for her. Husbands should love their wives as their own bodies. He who loves his wife loves himself. For this reason, a man shall leave father and mother and be joined to his wife and the two shall become one flesh. This is a great mystery, but I speak in reverence to Christ and the church. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please all stand to honor the Holy Gospel. this love, let us love one another, another as he loved us. with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord. Some Pharisees approached him and tested him, saying, Is it lawful for a man to divorce his wife for any cause whatsoever? He said in reply, Have you not read that from the beginning the Creator made them male and female, and said, For this reason, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. So they are no longer two, but one flesh. Therefore, what God has joined together, no human being must separate. My brothers and sisters, the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated. If you've noticed, I've changed the readings for your wedding celebration because I think the readings um, are not appropriate for the celebration of the Mass, specifically for this wedding. And uh, we have used these um, readings that uh, is included in the Sacrament of Marriage, Catechesis, and Rites, which I think speaks profoundly of how you, Jed and Helen, should understand what you are about to receive today, what you are about to promise each other. You know, there's a saying that we are meant for each other. We are meant for each other. That's why you see, one of the prayers that we usually say when we were younger, including me, is that we can find a suitable partner whom we can spend our lifetime together, right? I'm sure you prayed for that, Helen, because you don't want to commit a mistake, especially in choosing the right. They say the Mr. Right, right? And I'm sure you did it as well, Jed. You prayed to God so that you'll be able to find the perfect match for you. Someone who can understand you. Someone who can really care for you. Someone who will love you no matter what. I think that is all our prayers because that is 
meant to happen to each one of us. We are meant for each other. Man and woman are meant for each other. And that's the reason why in the celebration of the Eucharist, we have included a reading coming from the book of Genesis. Because from the beginning of time, that has been included in the plan of God. Maybe we should ask the question, why is it that oftentimes when we think of the fall, meaning the fall of man, when Adam and Eve took the fruit that the serpent gave them and ate it, and that was the beginning of damnation for man, right? And oftentimes, the one who is put to blame for that crime is the woman. Papayag ba kayo nun? Siyempre, hindi, di ba? It's not the woman. Actually, if, you go, if you're going to read the scriptures, particularly the book of Genesis, it is recorded as a sin of Adam. Eh, pero Father, si Eve, yung kumausap doon sa ahas. Di ba, sabi natin, that's really how it was related in the book of Genesis. Si Eve then ang tumawag kay Adam para tikman yung nakainan niya. Okay, nakainan niya na sabi natin palagi mansanas. Pero that's not in the record of the book of Genesis. It's a fruit from that forbidden tree that Eve tasted and eventually shared to Adam. It was not Eve. It was Adam who committed the mistake or the fault. How is that? Because Adam was not present when Eve was tempted, Eve was in her weakest because of the lack of support that her husband is expected to give. The reason why you want to marry each other, Jed, is because you want to give your entire life for Helen. Bigla siyang nagtaka, totoo ba yun? Eh, dapat it has to be settled from here on, okay? Wala na tong babalikan, wala na tong sala ulian, ha? That has to be very clear, Helen, that from here on, after you receive this sacrament, you will be meant for each other in good times and in bad, in sickness and in health, till death do you part. Till death do you part. That is a clear vocation of man and woman that's meant to live their lives together. But then, of course, let's not be so romantic, romantic in, in all this reality, right? Because in the first place, Helen, there's no such thing as perfect love. Ask your parents about it, Jed, and they will agree with me. There's no such thing as perfect love. And I think this is the beauty of the celebration that we have today. You will be beginning a new life together after this Mass. But you've got to surrender everything first to the Lord. It starts with a procession. You are coming toward the altar as if you are presenting yourself to the Lord. Lord, here I am, Lord. After so many years of courting Helen, I am here, Jed. It was difficult. You know, I, I, I did a lot of sacrifices just to get her fiat, just to get her yes, but I think I'm successful, right? Because we're here, Lord. And I, the same goes with you, Helen. I am here, Lord. I am presenting myself and my love for you but the two of you has to agree that this love will not be complete without him without him because what completes and what will help you perfect this relationship will always be him who is the author of love and him alone kaya nga ang ganda ganda lumalapit kayo sa altar, sinasabi niyo sa Panginoon, Lord, ito po ang aming pag-ibig, hindi magiging perpekto at kumpleto kung wala ka. 
And that's why the Christian perspective of marriage is always understood as a Trinitarian. It's always understood in the Trinitarian dimension. What do we mean by that? It's, only about, not, it's not only about the two of you here. Because if you're just going to rely on your strength, Jed, you'll get tired. The same goes with you, Helen. You'll get tired. You'll doubt. You'll get tired. You will doubt. Why? Because it is a reality. We are weak. We are weak. And we just can simply rely on our strength because that, uh, that also is limited. And that's why the Lord proposes, in your weaknesses, allow me to be your strength. And that's why if you want this relationship to continue as long as you live, allow God to be in the very center of this relationship. Because He is the bond that will bind you, that will bind the two of you for the rest of your life. After all, as we have said, as St. Paul proposes, he is the author of love. And he will be with you first and foremost to teach you how to be faithful to one another. Because I think that is the greatest challenge of a married life, to be faithful to one another. Yes, Jed, ang lalim ng iniisip mo. Dapat pag-isipan talaga yan. Ha? To be faithful to one another in good times and in bad. Sabi ni Jed, to naman si Father, binubuking ako. In good times and in bad, in sickness and in health, you will try your best to be faithful to one another. And you will try your best to really give the best you can afford. Because you see, the standard of, law of the Lord is quite difficult. To reach. Why? Because the Lord teaches us about love. And He says, no greater love than this, than to lay down one's life for your beloved. And I'm sure Jed, Helen is beloved to you. Right? And Helen, Jed is beloved to you. And so you are both willing to offer your life so that the two of you can have a happy life together. That is the requirement of the gospel. That is the kind, the brand of love that Jesus proposes to you. And you can't do it alone. Definitely. And that's why from here on, Jed and Helen, you will be married to one another. But you will also be married to Christ. Don't forget Him in this relationship because He is the key to a happy and lasting relationship with one another. Let's say yes to that. Amen. Candle sponsors, please come forward. May we request the parents and principal sponsors to stand. Jed and Helen, please stand for the rite of marriage. Kindly light the candles. They symbolize Jesus as the light of the world. He is the light in our darkness so that the two of you will never stumble in darkness because you will possess His light. Dearly beloved Jed and Helen, you are here today to seal your love with an eternal bond before the church. I assure you of the prayers of our community that God may pour His abundant blessings on your love and help you to carry out the duties of the married state. And you, my dear brothers and sisters who are present here, may I ask you to help them with your prayers and accept them as a new couple in our Christian community. Jed and Helen, can you please face each other? You see, this is your moment. Okay? Ngayon nyo lang gagawin to at ang sagot ninyo, ngayon nyo lang sasabihin. Kaya, please, pakisagot lang with feelings from the bottom of your heart. And when you answer the question, look at each other in the eyes. 
May I now ask you to answer truthfully the following questions. Helen, did you come here of your own free will to bind yourself forever in the love and service of your husband? Yes, Father. Jed, did you come here of your own free will to bind yourself forever in the love and service of your wife? Yes, Father. Jed and Helen, are you ready to raise as good Christians the children whom God will give you? Yes, Father. Now, Jed and Helen, since you wish to contract holy matrimony, now you're facing each other, join your hands together and express your vows before God and His church. Do you memorize the vow? No. Yes. <laughs> I, Jed, take you, Helen, to be my wife. I promise to be true to you in good times and in bad, in sickness and in health. I will love you and honor you all the days of my life. I, Helen, take you, Jed, to be my husband. I promise to be true to you in good times and in bad, in sickness and in health. I will love you and honor you in all the days of my life. And now you say this prayer together. Okay, come closer. Hold hands. Do not... Uh, okay, okay. So say this prayer. Grant, Grant us, us o, o Lord, Lord, to be one heart and one soul, from this day forward, for better, for worse, for richer, for poorer, in sickness and in health, until death do us part. And I, by the authority of the Church, calling on all those present here as witnesses, confirm and bless the bond of marriage which you have contracted in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. My brothers and sisters, let's give a round of applause for Mr. and Mrs. Jed and Helen. We will continue this wedding ceremony with the blessings of rings and array. Let's have the rings and the array. If you have the Bible as well. Okay. We shall bless the rings and the array first. Our help is in the name of the Lord. He made heaven and earth. Let us pray. Bless, O Lord, these rings, so that your servants, Jed and Helen, who wear them, may ever live in mutual love and in unbroken loyalty. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Bless, O Lord, your servants, Jed and Helen, with sufficiency of material possessions with which these are a symbolize so that they may use them to attain eternal life through Christ our Lord. Amen. Helen, wear this ring as a sign of my unconditional love and loyalty for as long as I live in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Jed, wear this ring as a sign of my unconditional love and loyalty for as long as I live. 
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Helen, I give you this array as a pledge of my dedication to your welfare and that of our children. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. And I accept them with a promise that I will be your equal partner in working for our welfare and that of our children. God will give us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Another round of applause for our newlywed couple. Please all stand and let us continue with the Mass. Dearly beloved, let us now pray for the Church and for our newly wedded couple whose marriage reflects the union of Christ and His Church. Now for every petition, we shall say, Lord, graciously hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For leaders of the Church and State, for heads of institutions, for heads of homes and households, that they will lead us and guide us in the search for peace and joy, in the search for love among us. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, graciously hear us. For all, for all married people, for those married yesterday, for the new couple, Jed and Helen, married today, for those getting married tomorrow, that they may savor the joy of being together, warm love, children, a long life, friends and good memories every day. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord graciously hear us. For all young single people who look forward to the vocation full of life and full of love, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord graciously hear us. For the lonely old and the lonely young, for the hungry rich and the hungry poor, for the sick in body, mind, and spirit, for weakness in all of us, for those broken and in pain, searching for healing, comfort, strength, guidance, wisdom, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord graciously hear us. For our relatives and friends who walk with us on life's journey, and for those who have gone before us to the other side of life, for a fulfilling life and blessings now and the hereafter, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, graciously hear us. In silence, my brothers and sisters, let us lift to the Father our personal intentions, including the needs of our family. And most especially, let's pray in a very special way for Jed and Helen as they begin a new life together as husband and wife. May the Lord be always with them. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord graciously, graciously hear us. us. Almighty, eternal God, Look down with favor upon your servants. Grant them the grace to remain faithful to you and to one another. At the end of a long and well-spent life, reward them with eternal happiness together with their children and with all those who love them. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Helen and Jed, kindly kneel down. May we request the Veil and Court sponsors to please come forward.
please all rise. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Show favor to our supplications, O Lord, and receive with a kindly countenance the oblation we offer for these your servants, joined now in a holy covenant, that through these mysteries they may be strengthened in love for one another and for you, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for you willed that the human race, created by the gift of your goodness, should be raised to such high dignity that in the union of husband and wife, you might bestow a true image of your love for those you created out of charity. You call to the law of charity without ceasing and grant them a share in your eternal charity. And so, the sacrament of holy matrimony, as the abiding sign of your own love, consecrates the love of man and woman through Christ our Lord. Through him, with the angels and all the saints, we sing the hymn of your praise, as without end we acclaim. Holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness, make holy. Therefore, these gifts we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more, giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, till you come again, till you come again. We proclaim your death, O Lord. Therefore, 
therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Gilbert, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Be mindful also, Lord, of Jed and Helen, whom you have brought to their wedding day, so that by your grace, they may abide in mutual love and in peace. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her most chaste spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, with Saint Cecilia, and with all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you for your Son, Jesus Christ. Through Him, with Him, in Him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, forever and ever. My brothers and sisters, together as one family in the Lord, let us pray in the words our Savior taught us. Brothers and sisters, let us humbly invoke by our prayers God's blessing upon Helen and Jed, that in his kindness he may favor with his help and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Now I ask you, my brothers and sisters, to pray over Jed and Helen. Jed and Helen, please bow down your head for the blessings. Holy Father, maker of the whole world, who created man and woman in your own image and willed that their union be crowned with your blessing. We humbly beseech you for these your servants who are joined together in the sacrament of matrimony. May your abundant blessing, Lord, come down upon this bride, Helen, and upon Jed, her companion for life. And may the power of your Holy Spirit set their hearts aflame from on high so that living out together the gift of matrimony, they may adorn their family with children and enrich the church. In happiness, may they praise you, O Lord. In sorrow, 
May they seek you out. May they have the joy of your presence to assist them in their toil and know that you are near to comfort them in their need. Let them pray to you in the holy assembly and bear witness to you in the world. And after a happy old age, together with the circle of friends that surrounds them, may they come to the kingdom of heaven. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Now, brothers and sisters, let us share to one another Christ's gift of peace. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. This is Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Happy are those who are called to receive him. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of Christ bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen.
male sponsors, please come forward. Please all stand. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that the power of the sacrament we have received may find growth in these your servants, and that the effects of the sacrifice we have offered may be felt by us all. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Jed and Helen, now that you have received the holy sacrament of matrimony, I admonish you to remain faithful to one another. Helen, love your husband and be a good wife. Persevere in faith, love, and holiness. Jed, love your wife as Christ loves his church and live with her in the holy fear of the Lord. Thank you very much for participating very well in this liturgy. Maganda ang misa kapag ang lahat ay nakikiisa. Tunay itong nagiging panalangin. At sa palagay ko, yun ang mahalagang mahalaga sa okasyon na ito. We come together to pray for Jed and Helen so that they may have not just a successful wedding, not just a successful wife together, but a happy life together. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Jed and Helen, bow your head and pray for God's blessing. May the Lord Jesus, who graced the marriage at Cana by his presence, bless you and your loved ones. Amen. May he who loved the church to the end, unceasingly pour his love into your hearts. Amen. May the Lord grant that, Bearing witness to faith in his resurrection, you may await with joy the blessed hope to come. Amen. And for all of us present here, may Almighty God bless you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our celebration is ended. We go in the love and peace of Christ. Thanks be to God. And let us welcome... Mr. and Mrs. Jed and Helen Granale to the new life as husband and wife in the eyes of God. Now, Jed, the moment you've been waiting for, you may kiss your wife, Helen.
mabuhay ang bagong kasal. Ang hina naman, mabuhay ang bagong kasal. Mabuhay ang bagong kasal. Please be seated for the signing of contracts and picture taking. begin our group Victoria, mother of the bride, please join the newlyweds. To be followed by siblings of the bride, please get ready. Join siblings of the bride. Brothers and sisters, please join. To be followed by relatives of the bride, please get ready. Again, all the relatives of the bride, please stand by. Please stay family of the bride and please join. 